Yeah, but um, that's, what, 18 seconds off world's quickest time. I yeah. guess, you know, you could probably look for eight seconds off world's quickest time um, in the A final. So we're probably looking at 6.46 for what the Lithuanians or the British whoever's going to win that race to come down in. So no world record times at the moment. Uh, it's a breath of a tailwind, but course pretty flat. Great conditions for racing, um, but for the aficionados who want a world record time, conditions aren't there yet. So we're back to the start now, though, for the B final, the lightweight men's four lane ones, Australia, Spain in two, Netherlands in three. That's Italy there in lane four. And in lane five, this is Poland. They made the A final at Lucerne and Eton, so should be hot ones to watch in this B final here. And then silver medalists at Euro Championships Seville. This is the Czech Republic over on the near side in lane six. I mean, in some regattas, this could be a decent A final in some World Cups if you saw the lineup in this uh, B final of the men's lightweight fours. Yeah, very much so. Australia, the Dutch, Italians, Spain, Poland, Czech, all class crews. Yeah, yeah, the Netherlands they got bronze at Lucerne, so it should be quick here. I saw um, the Italians out paddling this morning with the coach, actually, and I, I really like looking at them. A uh, bit of a mystery to me why they, they weren't in the final, because they're such a pacey crew. And I think of all the Italian crews, they were slightly chased from the front end, but I think they were getting hold of the boat. There we see their stroke man, Giorgio Tuncardi. He got silver in the pair at Euro Championships in Seville, so they've clearly brought him in here to inject a bit of pace into the lightweight men's four. And he's certainly doing that as they nose out to nearly third of a length in the first couple of hundred. Yeah, there's still like, what do you reckon, 45, 46 up there? Mm. Yeah, and this is what we expect. We've said it before, in the lightweight men's category particularly, such a high stroke rate, uh, really fast out of the blocks. And uh, that's what you have to do to compete. And we see them quite often in the last 250, well up above 40 strokes a minute, absolutely barreling towards the line. Uh, but they look great here. They're one man up at the moment. Uh, pushing out to almost half a length uh, over the Polish in the lane next to them. Well, this is the Poles here, Paweł Czyskowski in the stroke seat. They had a quick start, not quite as quick as the Italians, but goodness me, they didn't like the Italians moving away and are just pulling back with every stroke now. Yeah, the Poles sixth in the Lighty Men's Four in Lucerne, fifth at the Eton World Cup. So again, probably a shock to be here in the B final today, but pacing it with the Italians up the front. They've actually rode a great second uh, 250, haven't they? Really, because the Italians went out quickly and they've gone through, well, just a tenth down. Yeah, really quick, and they're showing no signs of slowing there as they come into the second 500, almost Babel for Babel with the Italians. I think what you're looking for is, is just how these crews uh, grip the water, you know, do they, are they patient, are they letting the sort of blade drop in before they actually get a, a hold of the water, and you can see the two crews there, for me, the Poles doing it just fractionally better than the Italians. I wonder when we're going to see some pressure from the Czech Republic near side of the picture there in lane six. There were silver medalists at European Championships at Seville earlier this year, not quite managing to stay on terms with these leading two. Yeah, that uh, men's four from the Czech, 11th at the Olympic Games last year, so they've stayed together coming into the post-Olympic year, uh, no doubt to try and improve as they head towards Rio, building on this combination uh, with hopefully some more experience, but just slightly off the pace of the Italians and the Poles. Uh, we're going to have a good shot here of the Czech crew. Uh, looking very strong at this stage, but just not quite the power on board. Uh, they look pretty good, uh, pretty good timing and, um, you know, moving the boat fairly well, but just not quite matching the pace of these two no, other crews. it looks a little sedate. Miroslav uh, Vrastil Jr. in the stroke seat. I think he used to race his dad about uh, 20, 30 years ago. Coming past the 1,000, though, it's Italy just managing to hold off the Polish boat through the line there. I'm wondering when we're going to see Netherlands start to move up the field. They had 
of the boats on the water, the two quickest 500s in the second half of the race in the semi-final. So I can see them starting to wind up for a big charge. Netherlands uh, on a real roll here as a nation, and I was out uh, in the bars about 1 a.m. yesterday with the guys that finished the race in yesterday, the men's four with gold. and so uh, none of these the boys on the water now. And there's the Dutch four. We can see them. Big things expected of them with the performance yesterday. Timothy Heibroch in the stroke seat to the right of your screen. And at the moment, we've got quite the match race going on between uh, the Dutch and the Czechs, and then also uh, back, a little further back with the Australians and the Spanish. That Australian boat doubling up in the lightweight men's eight that took silver a couple of days ago. What a great race in the front of the field. You see, the Italians, I really did think they looked sharp when they are out paddling this morning, practicing the start, and actually a class act, and the poles going with them. And look, you can see on the face the effort of the two men in the Italian boat, Armando de la Quila, with the sunglasses just in front of the guy with the white visor and he does look like he's suffering be interested to get a shot of the polish boat see what their faces are like because they're having to own sort of uh, half a canvas behind and they've picked it up haven't they they've not let the italians move away they've had a few looks over and this is the sort of reaction i think is absolutely vital in this third 500 coming up to the line to make sure you're in reaching distance when you need to start winding up for the finish only 0.2 of a second behind the Italians at the line, but they're absolutely bow ball for bow ball now. And there's absolutely a match race going on out the front here. The Czechs and the Poles, so, uh, sorry, the, uh, the Italians and the Poles so evenly matched coming into this race. They're really just racing it out between them, both desperately going for the win, and they're putting clear water into the rest of the field. The other four boats in the field almost level now, but look at this charge from the Italians. The third 500, this is what we expect to see. Uh, they're, sorry, the fourth 500, they're coming up to the final 250. Both of the crews on around 40 strokes a minute. Uh, they're looking strong. Giorgio Tucanardi has absolutely thrown the rating through the roof there. Up well over 41 now, and it is paying dividends. They've pulled out to a full half a length over the Polish there. I didn't see them having this kind of charge in the final 250. In the, uh, in the semi, they took a lot out of the Polish in the last part of the race, too. And uh, it's such a shame because the Poles have a, a brilliant race. And now the rest of the field is closing. Patrick uh, Rojas Anzar, the Spanish stroke, winding his crew up. Look at the Spanish charge here. They've brought the Aussies with them. All of a sudden, these two crews are back into contention. And they're almost through the Polish. This is unbelievable. The Spanish just nosing in front of the Poles. Shining lines there. The Italians coming up to the line. Polish just going to hold off Spain. It's really tight there. What a final burn from the Spanish. I didn't see that coming either as they managed to take third place in this race. Absolutely incredible. I mean, the Aussies and the Spanish were at the back there basically match racing for five and six. And then next thing you know, big charge bringing one another through. Uh, into third and fourth, almost getting up over the poles for second, but brilliant race there from the Italians. They took it uh, by the horns uh, when they were level pegging there with the poles. They were brave, they bit down and they took the win. Look at that, Tomasz Zagorski in the three-seat of the Polish boat gave absolutely everything 